All right, I'll call this meeting to order. Uh, folks, can you please join me in the pledge of the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, if you could bow with me for a moment, silent prayer. Amen. Thank you all for coming tonight. We uh, have a few things on the agenda. Uh, so we'll try to get through our normal stuff real quick and get into the meetup. So the uh, first thing, guys, uh, we see everybody is here. That is great. And we'll move into reading and approving the minutes from the August 21st meeting of 2018. Make a motion to accept those. Thank you, Tim. I'll second that. Thank you, John. Any discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you all very much. Uh, reading over the uh, financial reports, I I noticed uh, that she didn't have the, the cemetery one included uh, on this one. We didn't have any any special activities uh, this month. Gonna be able to take care of the ADC administration ourselves uh, next month. Will be our time. That's what Tammy just asked about, Harold. Okay. And uh, next month, we will, we'll change some things. I'll go ahead and make a motion to accept you. All right. And do I have a second? I'll second. 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 Commissioner Johnson, any discussion? 
Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? All right. All right. Thank you all very much. All right. We're going to move right along uh, to commissioner reports. Commissioner Green, do you have anything on the sanitation department? Yeah, I talked to the driver this morning. He said everything was hunky dory, so I didn't do it. Good. Good to hear. All right. Commissioner Tammy Light, Scott. Anything for the cemetery? Yeah, we haven't had a very active month at the cemetery either. Dave's still mowing, all looks well. All right. Have, we do need to talk, I guess, to the surveyor about where the road is going to be and all right. get that mapped out. So. Right on. And get our uh, our pins in. Yes. Uh, and they haven't came in yet? Yes. Oh, yes. only here? You have the new road markers. What about the solar light for the flower or flag pole. Uh, no, no, I haven't ordered that yet, but thank you for viewing. Uh, how much money did we say we were going to spend on that? We were going to spend like 30 bucks. One yeah, I think it was no, no more than 50. No more than 50. Yeah, that's right. We decided to go with the cheaper one, hoping that it would be good enough. Right, and if it only lasts six months, we order another one for 50 bucks. Yes. <clears throat> And um, Commissioner Johnson with the wastewater department. Yeah, I talked to Jim today, and uh, <clears throat> a fellow named uh, Jeff Lee uh, brought this. They can they can get this installed and everything. The coordinator for uh, like a cap of three thousand. And I just was going to wonder if we had that. Right. Go ahead and get that taken care of. Right. And uh, yeah, this guy Jeff Lee is a real honest guy. He's going to be, I mean, I know him. And, and Gary, explain to him what the importance of that chlorinator is. Oh, shoot. You got to have this chlorinator because you got to you got to chlorinate to get all the bacteria, and then you got to dechlorinate to get rid of chlorine before you put it in the stream. But the chlorine has to be there to kill it. If you don't have the chlorine, you're done to just live bacteria out of the stream and kill everything. Right. And it has to be metered, and that's what this does. If we can just dump chlorine in it. This <coughs> has a specific, uh, specific speed to it. You right. can set it for the dosage. Right. The, the current one we have down there, from what I can gather from the blueprints from uh, 1980 or whenever it was, 81, 79, that's the original one down there. Uh, last time we had a problem with it, it was on a Sunday. Uh, the guy that currently does it is in Salem, Indiana, and uh, it took a while to get a hold of him, and once I got a hold of him, he come the next morning, uh, which put us in violation overnight, and he had to look for parts for it because it's not readily available. And uh, this is a complete system change out, um, scales and everything, and uh, he had told us last year that we were going to be looking at some new scales real shortly. Uh, Mainly, they have been underwater down there a couple of times. Um, so it basically does everything. Yeah, that that's automatic testing. That that does that that does everything from weigh the bottles to put the gas in uh, the contact tank on both sides. That's a complete rip out and go back in brand new. Uh, this guy called me, the salesman. He was from Florida, and I was very hesitant to even talk to him, but. When he told me what he had, I knew we were in a place that we was going to have to replace them. And then uh, I agreed to meet with him. When he came, his local guy that does this, I had seen him in several trainings and stuff. I did not know him. Uh, I recognized him when he showed up, but uh, Newt knows him. And the guy knows everybody because he was rattling off old time names of people who's been in this industry for a while in this area. So I believe he's trustworthy. Yeah, because he works for Kentucky Rural Water. Yes, yes, he is. Uh, he works for Kentucky Rural Water. But, uh, and it's three thousand dollars for everything just to install. It's going to be something south of three thousand. Uh, he told me today that uh, three thousand was retail. He said, "I'm not going to charge you that." He said, "I will send you an email, a hard dollar figure." And uh, but I'm talking to. He said, "Well, why don't we just see if we can go ahead and." get it approved for anything up to that, and then we can go ahead and get this knocked out before bad weather gets in. So that's 
That's what I'm saying. So this keeps you from having to do it? No, no, no. No. He, no this meters the, the chlorine that goes the tree and it meters the sulfur to kill the chlorine. It's just a basic meter. And there's one picture on there. We got two of these hanging on the wall. Now. All right. But there's one picture in here. If you understood that, you know what I was talking about. There's one picture in here that if you look at it and you went down there, you would see it hanging on the wall right there. It's These bottles are weighed and what they do, these bottles weigh 150 pounds. When it reaches zero, it automatically switches over to the next tank. We always got two tanks ready to go. And uh, in the event that fails, which did with another local company here, and it put them three-day boil water advisory last week because that failed. Oh man. So it's just changing out the old system. Uh, doesn't really change anything else. No. Yeah. It does not change the operation at all. That's what happened inside. It's spring loaded when it's released. Yeah, I've read this over here. Yeah. So that's what it does. With the ceilings, your motion is up to three thousand dollars. Am yeah. I hearing you right? I'll second it because right. I mean, you gotta have it. Right, yeah. right. And and like Jim's saying, that that the existing one, thirty-seven, thirty-six, thirty-seven years. And the fact that last time he was here, uh, Jennifer called me out on it. The bill was what, like seventeen hundred dollars, something like that. Yeah. So, a couple of tricks here, and we've done pay for a new one. For a new one. I didn't see you walking. Yeah, so we'll knock it out. All right, we have a motion on the floor to spend up to $3,000 on a new chlorinator for the wastewater treatment plant. We have a second. Is there any discussion? All right, all those in favor? All right, all right. Thank you very much, folks. We will, Jim, do you want to go ahead and give that guy a call and take care of the order? I'll wait for the, he gets me an email. I'm okay. going to let him know that we're going to do it regardless. All that right. Way, there's no elevated pricing. Right. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, and to, just to speak a little bit more about the wastewater, uh, I have been in contact with a lady named Mari. She, I forgot her last name. She is with Kentucky Emergency Management. Uh, she is going to help us start recovering some of our FEMA dollars. Uh, I reached out to Clay Kelly, who has helped us do do this uh, thing. And uh, yes, Mario, you know, did I send you that email? Uh, so it looks like we're going to start getting some reimbursement uh, on the on the money that we've spent from the flood in 2015, and that will that will really help us a lot to have some money to put back in the bank. Oh. And into the sewer system. For failing the sewer system. Yeah, for things like this this wastewater system. All right. Uh, anything else? No, not no. Yeah, not unless Jim's got something else. Okay. All right. Uh, next, we'll go with John with the streets and sidewalks. All right. So in front of me, there's a bunch of pictures of a bunch of cracks. Do you all want to look at them? All right. In the sidewalks or the streets? Streets. You want to get some cracks? Yeah. All right. So, and all of these pictures are just street cracks where the streets are deteriorating, and we have a not a permanent fix for it, but it will help the streets become uh, live longer. So, before you get some crack filler, filler is that anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a guy here to talk about it. We're basically going to rent a machine. Uh, it's not something that we really need to do right now, but it's something that we should look at and see. I mean, we have an estimate here. We could maybe look around to see how this one goes. Uh, but I'm going to let the guy talk about it. Well, my name is Ed Missinger, and uh, I'm from Sealmaster of Louisville. And I've uh, been with Mr. 
Pollock there for a while. Are you going Pollock or Pollock these days? It, is, no? it has never been the other way. It is always one way. And what <laughs> I am responsible for, what I'm responsible for is for Sealmaster, which is a, a nationwide, I'm sure most people have heard who Sealmaster is, correct? Does anybody not know who Sealmaster is? Well, we are a pavement preservation uh, company. We manufacture the equipment and the crack sealants that preserve uh, the roads. And you've all seen the, you know, the squiggly lines on the road, correct? Yeah. Okay, so. We had this done several years ago. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I actually did a demo so, out in front of the courthouse. Yeah, yeah, last year. All right. This is the same year. stuff we did here back in 2010. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it really got help too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, save, well. Save a lot of money for it. Yeah, it, it's, it's actually a, a really low cost compared to uh, overlays. And what you're trying to do here is you're trying to extend the life of your, your roads, okay? And when you go around and you look at roads that are starting to crack, that's when you want to, to crack seal. It's not when they're getting what we call alligators, when you see a bunch of little cracks. That means there's enough water penetration under the road, it's kind of deteriorated the substrate, substrate and it's kind of sinking. If you ever notice when they when they put the rocks on the road underneath, it's kind of dusty, right? Yeah. That's called dense grade, okay? And they compact that. When you get a crack in the road, which is totally normal, you get water penetration. When the water penetration starts to wash out that dust, and then when you wash out that dust over time, you lose that volume. And when you lose that volume of rock, it settles. And then you have the weight of the road and the, and the cars coming will sit there and slowly deteriorate the road. So what you're trying to do with crack sealing is prevent water penetration, okay? So uh, as much as a lot of people don't think it's a pretty thing, it prevents potholes, okay? And anybody who doesn't think that a, a, a yeah. squiggly line is ugly to look at, well, I think the bill on a $600 rim is a lot worse to look at than a squiggly line. So. What crack sealant is, is polymerized rubber and asphalt. Make it really basic, rubber and asphalt together. And what you're doing, you have to do that versus like an emulsion because we have a free saw cycle in the state of Kentucky that is daily, okay? I don't know when that's gonna be. What's that? Dry. <laughs> what, what, oh, well, <laughs> well let, me, let, me, let me explain the free saw cycle that some of you guys might not really think about. Okay, when, when, when you're in Buffalo, when, when, it, when it goes down below 32, generally stays down below 32, but everybody in their mind thinks the roads at Buffalo are gonna be a lot worse than here. Well, here it's worse because we go from being 15 degrees to 50, okay? And then if it rains and it freezes and then it heats up again, that water gets into that crack, okay? And then we drop down to 19 degrees at night. Freezes, expands pushes the asphalt apart, okay? So you want to stop that penetration, okay? And crack sealing is, is a tenth of the price of, a, of an overlay or milling and repaint, okay? It will not prevent, it, all asphalt oxidizes, all asphalt deteriorates over time. You're gonna have to do it. But this will extend the life. There's a, there's a the, the Federal Highway Administration they get all their testing data from a company, uh, 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 not a company, but a, a, a uh, NCAT, which is an association down in, in Auburn University. They do all the testing nationwide. So as they've tested over the years, this has gone on for 30, 40 years now, crack sealing will extend the life of a road when it's properly done five to 10 years. Okay, it's important when you're on the tight budget. Okay, what I handed you guys here, in the middle here is a crack sealing program. This is designed specifically for municipalities such as your own, okay? And what this does is we will bring, I will bring, and we've already done demos, but I will bring a machine out. It's pretty simplistic, you know, it's a startup, everything is sequential, and as it heats up, nothing will work until it comes up to temperature, okay? And then Jimmy and his guys, and Jimmy's been down it when I was with another company down in Evansville, and he's seen some demos. Uh, you know, once I, once I train them, I, I drop off the machine, we'll run it up, I'll train them, I'll stay here on the first day, 
you know, to help them make sure they're getting it down. It's pretty easy, okay? But that's two pallets of material, okay? It's a dollar five a pound. Two pallets of material, 4,800 pounds. That's including your rental for a week, okay? Takes two, three guys to do it, and that's at, at a quarter inch by quarter inch crack, which is your typical crack. That'll give you 10 miles of linear crack. Uh, 10 miles of road, 10 miles of linear crack. And I will help Jimmy, Jimmy's pretty uh, experienced, but it, you know, I will help him pick out the roads that should be done and where we should, you know, a lot of times you have to hit spots that you, you, you get the worst offenders and then you leave it and then you move on. So this is a low cost way of utilizing your budgets for, for the road to help stabilize the deterioration of your existing road. Now see, I'm looking at, I haven't seen any of these, these pictures. Which, these look a little yeah, like uh, spider like, or some alligator no, some no, see, Now this is a good candidate right here yeah. for crack scene. This is a good candidate for crack scene. There's when you get, there when you get to this kind of area right here, I don't know how good you can visualize that. On the edge. Um, yes. On the edge. It's alligator, and that's where you just hit the worst offenders. Okay, worst offenders meaning the white cracks, okay? And what you do is you take the machine, and Jimmy will have a guy out in front of the machine blowing out the crack. There'll be a guy in the truck, and there'll be a guy behind. It takes three guys, okay? You blow out the crack, and you come and seal it all along, and it's a moving road closure, okay? You can drive on this 15 minutes after it's put down, okay? So there's really no road closure except for the area in which you're working. You know, if you block out this road down to the block, get that taken care of and move on. You know, what I would do in your case, which I don't think Bedford has a lot of people parking on the street, you just, if you know you're going to do a street jimmy, you notify the, the people who move their cars. You know, and it's pretty, pretty simple. You can get a lot of material down in one day. Typically, for guys like Jimmy who have, you know, several guys that are going to be pretty handy to do this, you'll easily do this in one week. Okay? And what I recommend for municipalities like yourself, keep in mind, it's 4,800 pounds. Dollar five a pound. I mean, for $5,000, you're repairing and maintaining a lot of roads. Okay? That's what you got to remember. It's a lot of bang for your buck compared to repay, which is two something or whatever square foot. So, um, with that being said, you can, you, in a week, you can easily get the two pallets down. Probably with Jim, you probably do it in three days. Okay, what I recommend is every year you set aside money, and then as the roads get to a point where it needs to be repaired, that's when you do it. How many miles of road you got, Lane Miles? Five. Five Lane Miles? Five. Five. Okay, so every year you do, do that. I mean, you have enough. I mean, five lane miles does not equate to five linear, you know, you see those cracks. You got transverse cracks and longitudinal cracks. And you'll always have a longitudinal crack down the middle of the road, you know, where the two paving lifts meet together. And that should always be sealed. You ever notice how the, how the potholes are in the middle of the street? That's because when they pave here and they pave here, water gets here. We actually make a product that glues that together as they're paving it. That's for another day. So that's the crack fill program that most municipalities do. And I can put anybody in touch if anybody wants to, to talk to somebody else in another municipality who has this in play. State of Kentucky crack fills on all their highways. And they do somewhere in the neighborhood 1.3, 1.5 million pounds of crack sealant. Okay. <coughs> a year. Will you do Madison, Indiana, or anything like that? Yes. Yes, well, right. I tell you, there's a lot over now. Yes, Indiana, ooh, we. The you. state, unfortunately, this state has been somewhat slow to accept crack sealing because this is what's known. I used to sell asphalt plants. They're called hot mix asphalt. You know, it's hot, it's 325 degrees. Well, a huge lobby in this uh, in this state, in the down in Frankfurt. To, they don't want you to seal that and not make it. They want you to mill it and repay it. And so the state has a lot of, you ever heard of Mountain Enterprises or Leonard Lawson? They want you to repay everything. They don't want you to prevent or extend the life. So Indiana has a huge crack sealing program. 
in their state. Kentucky has kind of like been the coming up to speed compared to everybody else. So, and that's part of the reason why I was hired because I handle all the municipalities. So, um, do you have any questions? This is something very simple to put down. It takes no more than a half hour of training for Jim, but he's already, he's already actually worked one of our machines. The only thing I want you all to know, and I, he said it, I want, I want to say it again. Sealing these cracks, not a problem. Right. Uh, what they call alligator spider webbing, yeah, this one. all this, it's not going to fix that. Right. So we have products. Just so that you know, can put on. and uh, there is a little bit of that. I think the worst place I know of is right in front of the courthouse, in front of Jerry Powell's office mm -hmm. on this side. I think that's where that picture is. Is that okay? But see, that's where you that's where you cut that out, and, and you can right. you can pay like a utility cut. But the so reason that's like that is because this was allowed to continue. Exactly. This is going to look like that. It might not be tomorrow. It might not be next month. It might not be next year. But it's going to look like this if this is not done something. Like that. This is strictly from NCAT at Auburn University. An unsealed crack will turn into a pothole. 75% uh, of unsealed cracks will turn into a pothole within three years. 1% of a sealed crack within three years turns into pothole. It just it shuts the water out. And if you've ever, you know, you, you know feel free to walk in front of that. Uh, uh, I did that last year. If you walk in front of the, the courthouse and you stick your finger into that rubber, it's pliable. And that needs a staple. Because that's what prevents the water and keeps the ears. And that's the big thing that you drive over. You see the little place. Sorry. We'll stick to your tires. We'll stick that. And we also have a, a detac material, you know, that you can spray on it and you can walk on it right away. You know, that that's not an issue. Uh, it, it, the detac is not that expensive. It comes up five gallon bucket. You put a bug sprayer. The only time I would really do that is like in front of somebody's driveway. You know, as you're going along, you just have the guy just hit it real quick. You know, if you see a car in the driveway, but um, there are products for that. A lot of people do sand, but then sand becomes a mess. So I'd rather see you do you know, detail. You can even spray water on it, you know, if you wanted to. But I wouldn't do it. I just wait. What's the best way to use this? The the best what? What's the best temperature? Oh, it's 40 and rising, but but the time of year to do it is now, between now and, and, and winter and spring before summer. I'll tell you why. You want you don't want the cracks too wide, you don't want the cracks too tight. Okay? So you want them meaty. Okay, if you do them too wide, it fills up more material. And then when it gets cold, it pushes it together, it ends up pushing it up and out a little bit. Okay? It's not a big deal, but 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 you're using more material in summertime. It's not that much more material when you're talking about these numbers, but if you were going down the highway, that's a lot, okay? And if you, you, you want it to fill a crack, so in, if you do it in too cold a weather, you know, it would be too tight. Now, you can supersede that by hit, hitting it with a heat lens, which is, you know, 1200 degree torch with compressed air, and you can heat the crack and then do it. You can do it any time of year, really. But ideally, it's a spring and a fall. We've had great success with that other we done years ago. Mm -hmm. It's worked well, real well. It, it, the, the thing about what you just said, sir, is that how you know it worked well is that it didn't turn into what Jimmy was talking about. Okay, you just need to seal the cracks. You just, there's no, there, it, it's water penetration. So, you know, if you stop water penetration, you'll, you'll arrest the, the, the potholes from happening. And if you go on uh, 42 towards Carrollton, when you get in past the Trimble County line, you'll see that their state department has done Highway 42 the whole way to Carrollton, where they've been putting all this in. Looks and the the price difference here years ago, uh, it was around twelve thousand dollars was the bid. Uh, this is five thousand because we're going to rent the equipment. We got Jim, he's our, going to be our only paid people. It's Gary and John, and me will be helping. And that, that, that keeps our price down. It goes pretty fast. And I'll be there in the beginning. But after I leave, if you, again, this, is, this, this panel right here will tell you why. Yeah. You know, the, what, why you should do it. And, 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 I that's, and just so you know, you should do it on your driveway, too. 
Yeah, it's good stuff. So, John, you pass that bit around, let everybody look at that, that proposal. Yeah. And just so you know, this is a standard price for municipalities, okay, for rent. If you went to City of Covington, City of Ashland, Kentucky, City of London, Kentucky, they're all paying the same exact price you are. So, so there's no... Negotiating? No, it's just... <laughs> You know, you you you're, you're uh, you can negotiate. Uh, we're going to be the cheapest. I can tell you that. Because well. you know, I, I work for the competitor, so I can tell you that that we're the cheapest. So, thank you. But anyway, you got it. Any questions? Please let me know. He'll talk a little. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, to me. Absolutely. Uh, Ed, I do have a question. Uh, say we decide we want to do this. What's the soonest you could get this equipment out? Next week. We got thirty of them. Okay. You know it, uh, and I'll just schedule and train it, uh, train you for it. And okay. uh, again, you'll put it down in a week. Right. And, and depending on your budget, I would actually probably <laughs> do something every year, Absolutely. every two years. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. So, All right, we're good to do. Yeah, thank you very much, Ed. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for coming, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you need me anymore? No, you're free, man. Okay. I appreciate it. All right, do you all have any questions or any discussion about it? Well, I said we'd do it. Just the date to do it, I haven't decided yet. Okay. Because I need to make sure I can get off the work to do it. We always get two off days a week, right? Yeah, but sometimes they're Saturdays. not close together. Right. Well, we'll work that out. Uh, Jennifer, are you offended that they said two or three months? Okay. No, no. Just wondering. <laughs> yeah, because we could, we, we could have Tammy out there too. Mm -hmm. And Jen. You know, we're keeping the wages down. So we can be the flag people. Yeah, there you go. Hey, y'all give me the volunteers. Well, you're volunteering too. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Oh no, that's at two fifty a month for being a commissioner, which you're paid for. Okay, we can be the flags. Yes. All right. So, uh, John, are you making a motion? I want to make a motion on it just yet, until we have a day. I mean, so when we figure it out, maybe we can do a special meeting. I have a question I want to ask. Uh, we're down pretty low on that road fund. Yes. Is there anything we can take out another fund to supplement? Well, this this five thousand dollars, it's it's not going to take us down that low here. Sixteen thousand. Yeah, we're at sixteen thousand. It's going to take us down. It should be over one point. Yeah. Uh, but the big thing is our municipal road aid money will be will be coming in to bring that back up. We yeah, we we are at twenty one thousand dollars in downtown. Yeah, twenty one, but you yeah. about sixteen. So that's going to take us to sixteen. Yeah. And you know, merch or something comes up, you know. Right. And we get our money back in, and it goes back up. Right. When does that come back in? It should be in the next month or two by November, I believe. Yeah. I'd like to get the stuff. Well, I'm going to go ahead stuff. and say I want to go ahead and do this, uh, and the reason why, I mean, John, I understand you got to schedule your around your work. Uh, well, I don't want to make a motion on it until we know the day. Yeah, I just don't want to call on a special meeting. Because if we can make our decision tonight, we get it, we have it done, and then we can, you, you get your schedule ironed out, and then we can schedule him. We can say, hey, look, we need it the week of October 1st. But we can go ahead and make a motion if things are accepted. Yes. And then when you get ready, that's when we're That's ready. when we call him and get it done. Yeah. Because he said they had 30 of them. And Right, and it'd be a week. If we order today, it'll be a week. So, John, we can we can wait for you. What day of the week do you get your schedule? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. The big guy's going to do it. I mean, how many losses is it? Be my bad. One person. It's going to be me, you, and Excuse you. Me. Three old men. Three old men. And two flag girls. Yeah, it could be worse. Yes. They, they got to have some brains there. <laughs> well, if we're there with the flags, we'll be good. Yes, that is so true. But we will need some traffic control. That is 
Yeah, yeah, we will. So we'll plan it on time. Because us running this thing, we ain't got time to look around. Right. No, it goes it's especially that deal, especially coming down by my house. I remember when OVA did it before. Uh, yeah, that that takes time to the slow the road flows on the top of it. Yeah, and at the bottom. Yeah. But it was if we start down by your house, by the time we get coming back up the hill down here behind Greenies, they're gonna be that back there already. So. Right, it'll be dry by then. Yeah. <coughs> and you don't have anything coming up that's emergency that that's gonna interfere with this. I'm, I'm pretty much locked over on good. Yeah. That's God willing. Everything looks good right now. And uh, I would, I'm like you. I would like to get it done tonight. I'll throw a little tidbit. That happened this past weekend. We were at a festival and they had black dot roads. Of course, they shut it down for foot traffic. Everybody was walking their dogs. I had heat gun and I was shooting the road. If you start out in the morning at 62, Saturday, that black top road up there was 117 degrees. The feet was walking all the time. Mm -hmm. The dog was burning the feet. That's so that's right. how much has changed this time of year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so October was really kind of prime. Yeah. I got, I got a job for Jim and Jordan. Uh, there's been some complaints about tree limbs hanging over on the street. Yeah, we're aware of them. And uh, out here were the uh, Bedford sign, one hanging over there. Yeah, we're aware of them. We okay, there's some issues complaints. Up. I've been hearing about it, so I just... We had some issues come up that we haven't been able to get to. Okay. Two, and, uh, now, the two short guys took care of some very, very low hanging uh, for me, but they didn't, they didn't get much of that out of ground. They hit everybody else in the face. <laughs> We did them Todd and Gary. Explain. We did them Todd and Gary height. Uh, Gary and I were uh, were trimming some uh, bushes around the, at an intersection where where some people had been complaining about they couldn't see past it. So uh, Gary and I got together and, and we're cutting them off and I took a step back to look and it was Todd and Gary height. So <laughs> anybody sh short as us, no problem. They could see just fine. But anybody a little bit taller than us could not have seen. So we went ahead, and we 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 uh, double teamed it and got it done, and it it looks better. Yeah, we we uh, we got it done. Uh, so on this, guys, back to this this uh, ceiling. I would like to have a motion to go ahead and get get it approved. I think the what was the bid? Five thousand forty dollars. Yeah. Uh, So do I have a motion then? Go oh, ahead and get this. All right. No, I'll take that motion. All right, well, thank you. And any discussion at all? No, hearing none. All those in favor? All right, thank you all very much. Well, we can figure out the dates. Yes. Let us all know. You're, are you going on holiday soon or no? Not, uh, not November. November. Okay, yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Because we'll plan that accordingly. Costa Rica, somewhere like that. Not this time, we're going to the home. There you go. All right, guys, it is also that time of year uh, that we look at the contract for uh, our uh, caretaker at the cemetery. Yes, there you go. Did I give you that resolution? I've got All right, thank you. Are we good? Uh, our, uh, our contract for the caretaker at the cemetery that's mowing services and general maintenance he fills graves uh, all year round uh, picks up trash all year round has been david richmond uh, this contract is is low low enough that we do not have to bid it out uh, and because of our experience with dave doing this work and because of our rapport with him I would like to recommend that we keep it up. We just continue his contract. It's the same thing uh, as it was last year when we did it. And uh, that's acceptable to you. And this and this contract will go until uh, October of 2020. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All right. And now, uh, any discussion? All right, all okay. in favor. I think Dave does a good job. I do too. Doesn't have to stand. I'm, 
really happy. So is everybody else. I, all I get is compliments on how it looks. Too many to do that kind of work. We do. And, <laughs> and also, guys, for me to sign this contract with him, we have a resolution. And I'll let Joanne read it. Resolution number 2018-2, City of Bedford, resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into contract for mowing the cemetery. Whereas the City of Bedford, Kentucky's contract with David Richmond um, for mowing for cemetery maintenance expires on September 5th, 2018. And whereas the City Commission believes that it is the best interest of the city to contract with David Richmond, through from September 2018 to October 2020. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City of Bedford, Kentucky, that the mayor is authorized to contract with David Richmond for the period of September 18 to October 2020 and sign any and all documents necessary to obtain said contract. And so after reading in full on the um, 18th yes. day of September 2018 and on motion by uh, Gary, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And seconded by Tammy. Mm -hmm. No, right. Yes. I made the motion. I made the motion. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 yeah I okay. Okay. Right. Sorry. We got it. Adopted by a vote of five ayes, zero nays. There you go. Okay. Dated on the 18th. So here you go, David. Thank you. Look up, son. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Do a great job. Thank you. Appreciate it. Moving right along, it is also that time of year for the tax bill, guys. Our current uh, ad valorem tax rate is uh, 0.15 15 cents per $100 worth of assessed value through the property valuation tax. Um, we have to pass this by ordinance every year. It's same thing. I would recommend that we leave this alone and keep the tax rate the same. Uh, I'm going to leave the floor open to you all and hear what you all think. It's going to be left same. Okay. I'll make a motion. All right. I'll say. Oh, all right. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor of leaving it the same? Thank you very much. I appreciate that, guys. And we will uh, get that done. Uh, but we have to pass it by ordinance. Okay, so I have to read it. So actually, that motion is for the first reading. Okay. City of Bedford, uh, series, wait, City of Bedford <coughs> Ordinance Number 8, Series 2018. An ordinance setting tax rate and levying ad valorem taxes. Whereas the City of Bedford is authorized to enact taxing legislation pursuant to Chapter 92, Kentucky Revised Statute. Now therefore be it ordained by the City of Bedford as follows, that pursuant to KRS 92.520, the City of Bedford, Kentucky does hereby provide that the assessment made by the Property Valuation Administration, Administrator of the County of Trimble for state and county purposes shall be adopted as the assessment for City of Bedford purposes, and that city tax bills shall be made from the County of Trimble list and the said property valuation administrator's books as provided in said section of the Kentucky Revised Statutes. That ad val valorum 2018, no, taxes shall be levied on all real and tangible personal property for 2018 as shown by the aforesaid assessment and shall be levied on all real and tangible personal property commencing with the tax year 2018 and therefore for residents of the city of Bedford and the tax rate of the tax year 2018 is set and established at 15, um, 0 0.15 cents per $100 of valuation. Number three, that any franchise granted in whole or in part by the city of Bedford and exercised within the city is taxed at the above rate. Number four, that the purpose of said taxes is fixed, set, established, and levied to the general revenues and all monies are paid to the city of Bedford, same to be paid into the general revenue fund of the said city of Bedford. Number five, the City of Bedford shall enforce collection of any tax bill due it by procedures authorized under the provisions 
of KRS 91.484 to KRS.91.527. Introduced and given the first reading on September 18th, 2018. All right, there we go. That's our first reading, guys. And we'll revisit again next month uh, to get that done. Uh, moving right along, uh, Jim has talked to me about uh, his computer down there at the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we, we got him one three years ago, and uh, the person that went and got it was not computer savvy and didn't really understand what uh, this person was looking to purchase. Uh, there are things that Jim needs to look up. Sometimes it's how-to things, or maybe it's looking up prices of things. Uh, maybe it's locating parts at different different places. And I would like to recommend, guys, that we get him something portable, a tablet of some kind that he's able to have in the field when he when he needs it. That way, if he if he has to look up a how-to video. Not likely, I mean, he knows a lot of things, but, but what if he does? He'll have it with him in the field. And, uh, and I think that's a, that's a valuable tool that he could use. And we're probably ballpark figures, uh, less than $700. What do you all think? Go for it. Yeah, I think you should have something portable. Yeah. Okay, do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. Uh, thanks, sir. Sure. Thank you, Commissioner Green. And while we're doing that, let's yes. go ahead and buy the QuickBooks portion, uh, the payroll portion of the payroll. QuickBooks. Oh. There's two things to order. And if we can't get it done, I mean, if we can go ahead and get the QuickBooks software at this point in the year, we can start January 1st. January. And, and, and the thing is, uh, on that, uh, yeah, we'll get that. I, I, don't, I don't have that price. I did yeah. have that price, but I don't remember. Uh, and we did approve that. I just haven't done it. So we'll get those, get that ordered. That's, that's on me to forget ordering that stuff. Uh, all right, so we have a motion and a second. Any discussion at all? All right, all those in favor. All right, thank you. All right, the next thing, guys, and this isn't on the agenda, but uh, I've asked Michelle to come speak to you all. Uh, Michelle sells uh, insurance, Michelle Murray, and uh, I had talked to her about uh, doing some kind of benefit for the, com for the employees on at least life insurance. Uh, certainly, we don't want to hear of any of them dying, but, but it's a reality of life. And uh, so Michelle talked to, uh, got numbers from me, got birthdays and all this stuff, and put together some things that maybe we could give our employees a little benefit of having, at least having a life insurance policy. So go ahead, Michelle. The floor is yours. I'm smart, and I'm a licensed health and life insurance agent. Hopefully this will happen. Um, so I came and I talked to them. They said they were very interested. It says actually through United Healthcare. And there's the prices. So there was two different pricings. One was for fifteen thousand, and one was for twenty-five thousand. Um, the price of the employee are <clears throat> would be three dollars a piece. The price for the fifteen thousand is twelve dollars. And the price of the 25 is $20. And that would be on the city to pay that. And then 12 and 20. And then the employee pays the $3. And we would pick up the whole thing. Yeah, yes. this would be a yes. cost. So it just depends on what, which one, the 15 or the 25,000. Basically, it is through United Healthcare. That was the best deal that we found out there. Um, so. And the average cost of burial is around ten grand now. Right, right, right. Uh, and I just thought that might be a little bonus for for all of our employees to have, just to give them a little peace of mind that uh, that should they expire, we could 
at least they'd have a little benefit. So how many employees are there for? That would be Jennifer, Jimmy, George, George and Jimmy. Jimmy. Mm -hmm. No, that's contract. I think that's different. Mm -hmm. And that price is regardless of age, right. act, lifestyle, or any of that. Absolutely. It's a group policy, so that you're not asking questions like that. Ain't no waiting period, is it? I'm sorry. Ain't no waiting period, is it? No. Will it take effect tonight? Just checking. No. <laughs> One breath. Just checking. <laughs> One breath away. Okay, so the total monthly right. premium per employee is forty dollars a month. Correct? Is that what I'm looking at here? On twenty-five thousand. That would cost us one hundred and sixty dollars a month for all four. Yes. So, but does that include that five dollars down there? Does the forty include the five? It is twenty thirty for the twenty five thousand, <clears throat> and it is fifteen for the fifteen per employee. But we would pay it all. We would, right. We would. Pay so it. that I'm just making sure is that the number that's all of it. Right. Okay. What I'm looking at is just saying, like Joanne, it says 40 and then your extra right. five down here. Right. So actually $40 per employee per month. So 25,000. Right. Yes. And what they was just doing was splitting it between the employee and the... Because probably a lot of places they don't. Right, they don't, they don't. right. Does that cover all this back here? I'm sorry? Does that cover all the back here on these parts? Does that cover all that? Yes, yes. Well, yes. she she does. She I, does cover I, all I, that. I right cover now. all that. But all we're asking her for right here is life insurance. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah, she can talk to you about any of those that are on the back of that card extensively. <laughs> yeah, I just did the, all the 2019 trainings for Medicare. I'm good to go with that. I mean, you know a little bit about that too. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> Go to each one of them and see how that goes. Go to each one of the carrier and have to listen to their 2019 yeah. rollout. <laughs> I, was, I have them up here that that is. Well, actually, I was really excited. I don't want to hear about that, but it has zero policy in Trimble County now, so I'm really psyched about that because Humana or Anthony. They don't have a zero policy in trouble. But they have to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, they have a zero policy and uh, they just rolled that out this year. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> for Medicare. Yeah. For and the advantage plan. For their advantage plans, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And we're looking at nineteen hundred twenty dollars a year, folks. I came up with more. Did you? 480 a month, our annual premium. Okay, I'm sorry. 480 per, per okay, I see. I, I did 40 times four. That's right. Times 12, is that what yeah. you came up with? Yeah. Is that right, Michelle? Yes. 40 times four. It's 1920. Yeah, okay. That's not bad. Since with some of these insurance policies, you can't get health insurance for that for a single person. Well, this is what not health. Yeah, like yeah just like yeah, it's to take care of them after they're sick. Yeah. And that'll come there. out of the general fund. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It won't be a benefit, of course. Uh, to them, but at least to their families. Well, I'll make a motion we do that for them. Fabulous. And Gary, you have a second. I'll second. Any discussion at all? Any questions? 
All right, all those in favor? All right, Michelle, so in the next day or two, we'll get together and get these things rolled out. We will, thank you. Good deal, thank you very much. All right, and uh, we have uh, some visitors here, so I'd like to hear from them. Uh, Dave, do you, you have anything you'd like to say, Dave? You start at the right, you go to the left. Jesse, long? Good. All right, Joe, would you like to have anything to say? All right. All right, Gordon, do you have anything for us on code enforcement? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, were you able to do anything with those, with that property out there on 42? Oh, you do have something on it. All right. Uh, out there by Barebone, right across from the cemetery. Right. That's the one, uh, that one we it's talked about. Yeah. The beer gas. Yes. Yeah. Across from kind of kind of near hometown, Rowlett Avenue area. All right. Uh, the next thing, guys, is community Thanksgiving dinner is fastly approaching. Uh, we always do it the Tuesday before uh, Thanksgiving, and that is again our night, our monthly meeting. Uh, last year we just met uh, before you. Yeah, we did, and called it a special meeting. It was no big deal. That was the twenty. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have talked to uh, two different churches already, and they're really excited about it, hoping that this year will be even a bigger, bigger event for us. And uh, our plans for the October 27th uh, Halloween uh, party, uh, Poppies is on board with us. They're gonna be doing a lot. The uh, Trimble County Public Library is on board. They're gonna be doing a lot. And I'm working with uh, another church today. They haven't committed yet, uh, but they want to be involved too. And that's, uh, I don't want to name them because they haven't completely, they wanted to talk to their elders and, and make sure that everybody's uh, kosher. Uh, all right, so anybody have anything else for the good of the Now we're on the Halloween party for me to do day. Does everybody yes. dress up? Yeah, absolutely. Or? Yes, I'm, I'm going to dress up like the mayor. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll just wear my hat. Yes, they're Burgermeister. That's me. <laughs> you mean you're going to have no dress up? Well, I'll wear my hat. You know, people can't tell the difference when I dress oh, up. Are we going to do pretty much the same thing we've done, the hay ride? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Hey, right and do that. Pumpkin carbon. Yes, yes. I love the pumpkin carbon. He wanted to do that. He was crazy. But he had a lot of luck. He had a lot of luck. He had a lot of luck. Yes, and, and I, so yeah, spread that word out. You know, we, we want as many pumpkins as we can get. I, I got it, I think, 30 last year. And uh, and all I did was give the, the fathers or mothers and, and the kids, like, go ahead and do. And, uh, well, and if we had a little that extra fun. place, we could, last year, the ones oh, yeah, I decorated, was tight, wasn't it? well, the ones I decorated with last year, I just, when they started to ride, I took them in and threw them. I had two of them. Mm -hmm. I ended up with eight pumpkins this year. So maybe we could grow our own for next year. Just <laughs> throw the seeds out back. Yeah, no doubt, for a moment here in the field. Oh, oh, that's it, Terry. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. We'll have, we'll have. <coughs> All right. Anybody else have anything? Um, All right, John. Not for me. Harold. Newt. Jennifer, do you have anything you'd like to offer? Joanne, no. I'm giving everybody a chance to say something. Nobody wants to talk. All right. <laughs> How about a motion to adjourn? I will go ahead and make that motion. Thank you, John. We need to just put that down for John as a standard. A second. And we have a second by Newt. And all those in favor. Thank you all very much.